Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for a new day. Indeed, you are good and your mercy is forever. This is the day that you have made for your people and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for a new opportunity to experience your greatness. We thank you for a new privilege, Lord, to experience your might, to experience your glory, to experience your power, Lord, in the lives of your people. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We appreciate you. We thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. We are grateful to you for your provisions made for the sake of your people. Your provision in the form of protection. Your provision in the form of mercy. Your provision in the form of grace. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Psalm 133, verse 1, your word makes us understand that how beauty it is, Lord, for the people of God to gather together in unity. How good and pleasant it is, Lord, for your people, Lord, to gather before your throne of grace here. Father, I thank you for this spirit of unity amongst your church. For this spirit of unity, Lord, that dwells in the midst of your people that keeps us in the spirit of oneness, that brings us together, Lord, to a place where you have ordained for your people to hear from you that which you have for us. Father, we are grateful to you for this spirit of oneness amongst us. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that even as we have made ourselves available before you, and to hear from you that which you have for us this morning. That you empower us, Lord, with wisdom. Empower your people with knowledge. Empower us with understanding. Give us insight to your word. Enlighten the eyes of our understanding. Father, and eventually we will never hesitate to say thank you unto your name. We thank you for every step of the way that you have made available for your people. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Brethren, you are all welcome to this morning's devotion. The Lord has blessed each and every one of us with a new day as today. And we are all grateful to him. Shall we please take our reading from the book of First Samuel chapter 4. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 1. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 1. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines encamped in Afek. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. And when the people had come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today? before the Philistines. Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes amongst us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from there the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. Now when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, 
What does the sound of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. So the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us, who would deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and conduct yourselves like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. Conduct yourselves like men and fight. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter and there fell off Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Also the ark of God was captured and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas died. Then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dead on his head. Now when he came, there was Eli sitting on a seat by the wayside watching. For his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out, when Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, What does the sound of this tumult mean? And the man quickly the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was ninety eight years old, and his eyes were so dim that he could not see. Then the man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle. And I fled today from the battle line. And he said, What happened, my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also, your, son, your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God has been captured. Then it happened when he, ha he made mention of the ark of God, that Eli fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken and he died. For the man was old and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. Now his daughter-in-law, Phinehas' wife, was with child due to be delivered. And when she heard the news that the ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and gave birth for her pain, for her labor pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women who stood by her said to her, Do not fear, for you have born a son. But she did not answer nor did she regard it. Then she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel. Because the ark of God had been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. Brethren, with this particular story, uh, a time came when the Israelites went to the battlefield with the Philistines. They went there with the notion of uh, being victorious. But then, that dream never came to pass. Normally, what they do is, Whenever they go to the battlefield, they go with the Ark of the Lord. But this time around, they didn't go with it, and then they went on their own. And then they were defeated. The Bible said that 4,000 men were defeated at that very moment. And then they realized that, no, they had left 
that which has been granting them victory whenever they go for battle behind. So they have to go for it. And you see, the, those times, the Ark of the Covenant of God signifies the presence of God in the lives of the Israelites. Whenever they have that Ark of God, victory is assured. Victory is assured. They know in any battlefield, victory is assured because they have the presence of God with them. And that is what the presence of God does in the life of people. Whenever the presence of God is with you, you know that wherever you are going, the Lord is with you. And for that reason, you have no cause to be afraid of anything. Because the Bible says that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So if he that is in us is greater and then he is going with you, then you go in faith and then you come back in faith. You have that full confidence that the Lord will do everything for you. So they realized that, no, they had to go back for this act. But the presence of God cannot dwell in a place where sin reigns. When they went back for the, present, uh, the Ark of the Covenant of God, they realized that it was in the possession of the two sons of Eli. That is Hophni and Phinehas. And these two people did evil against God. So God had the intent of killing them. As a matter of fact, Eli was even made aware by God because he failed to put his two sons in order when they were going wayward, when they were doing all manner of evils. These two people ended up desecrating the holy offerings of the Lord. They also lay with the women that comes to the temple. So they committed all manner of atrocities in the eyes of God. So God had planned on killing them. And the ark of God was not found in any other person's possession than in the possession of these two people. So even before the ark will be taken back to the battlefield, the glory of God or the presence of God in that ark had already departed. Because God is holy and then he doesn't dwell in the place where sin reigns. No other person was required to keep the ark of God or was required to be the custodian of the ark of God than these two people that had committed all manner of evil against God. So they went for the ark of God and then they went back to the battlefield. And this time round, the defeat was more than the first one. The defeat was very great. 30,000 people were defeated. Previously, it was 4,000. And they were thinking that if they had the presence of God with them, victory would be theirs. They went for the ark of God at this time round. 30,000 people were defeated. So this clearly shows us that the presence of God is vital in the life of every believer. The presence of God is, the, is very crucial in the life of every believer. This morning we'll pray about the departed glory. The departed glory. Because when the presence of God was departed, look at what it brought to Eli. Look at what it caused to Eli's daughter-in-law. It was very significant to them. Something substantial. Something that they could do, they could not do away with. So, when the news reached out to Eli, he heard of the fact that his two sons were dead. He was not concerned about that because something uh, the Lord had already told him concerning how he intends to bring a distraction to his household. So it is something that he was already aware of. So when the news reached out to him that his two sons were dead, it was no news to him. But what caused his death was when he realized the fact that the ark of the covenant of God had departed. Because he knew the consequences of the departure of the ark of God. He knew the consequences of the departure of the presence of God in the lives of every Israelite. He knew the consequences of what will happen to his people 
should the presence of God leave them. So that news never went well with him at all. And that is what caused his death. And when his daughter-in-law also heard of that, she also died through childbearing. After the delivery of the child, out of that pain, she named the child Ichabod. Because the ark of God had been taken from Israel. The glory of God is departed from Israel. So how would these people cope if the glory of God is departed from their life? How are they going to cope? Like I said earlier, this morning our prayer is going to be centered on the restoration of the departed glory in our lives. I don't know about your case. Probably your case may be that you have gone for a job interview. And per your qualifications and your experience, every skills you have acquired, and your performance at the interview, you know that this job is for you. You know that you are the rightful person for the job. But due to maybe conspiracy that is formed against you or due to any form of sabotage against you, you lost that glory. You lost that glory. You are in an office and you are about to be promoted. But you don't know for no reason that promotion has been given to another person where you know that you are the rightful person to be promoted. You have this contract that you, you, you are looking forward in receiving. You are competing with a competitor. You know that per your proposal and everything, you are the rightful person for this contract. But for no reason, by reason of conspiracy or by reason of ignorance, you may have lost that contract. That glory has departed from your life. That glory has departed from your life. Your case may be that you and your partner are planning to get married. You've done everything. For no reason, this person has a change of mind and says that the marriage cannot hold anymore. That glory has departed from your life. The Lord blessed you with the fruit of the womb you had conceived. You are looking forward in a successful delivery. Everything seems to be going on well with you. Then all of a sudden, you lose the child to miscarriage. All of a sudden, you lose the child to stillbirth. That departed glory. This morning, your prayer is that every glory that is departed from your life be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. You are praying that every glory that has departed from your life by way of ignorance, by way of conspiracy, by way of sabotage, you are praying that any departed glory from your life by way of false allegation bent against you, you are praying for its restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. You are speaking to the Lord directly that he should restore to you any departed glory, any departed glory from your life, any departed glory from your life, any departed glory. You have seen that your moment of promotion has come, but for no reason. That thing has eluded you. You have seen that you have gotten to the stage where your elevation moment is coming. Your elevation moment is coming. But for no reason, that moment has eluded you. You are praying for the restoration of that departed glory in your life. Because the people of Israel realize the impact of that glory should it depart truly from their lives. They realize how, in, how significant that glory is. We are praying that any departed glory from our life be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Any departed glory from our life be restored to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Any glory that we may have lost by way of sin, we pray for its restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for its restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, show us mercy and restore to us. Show us mercy and restore to us, Lord. Any departed glory from our lives, Lord, have mercy on us and restore it to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, show us mercy and restore to us, Lord. Have mercy on us and restore it to us in the mighty name of Jesus. 
any struggle of the enemy against our marriage, any struggle of the enemy against our relationship, any struggle of the enemy against our businesses, any struggle of the enemy against our career, any struggle of the enemy against our ministry, any struggle of the enemy against our spiritual life. We come against all of them in Jesus' name. We pull all of them down in the mighty name of Jesus. Countenance of the Lord shines on you. May the Lord order your steps. May the Lord continue to enlighten the eyes of your understanding. May the Lord protect you and preserve your life. May the Lord make provisions for you. May the Lord go ahead of you this day, even as you plan in engaging in your activities in the course of this day. The Lord should be your leader in everything. May the Lord lead us in our decision making. May the Lord instruct us on what to do and what not to do. May the Lord bless us. May every promises of the Lord made for our sake manifest in Jesus' name. Stay blessed and have a wonderful day. Amen. <laughs> 